Hi, my name is Harsh, and in this video, we are going to discuss about saving or persisting state in local stack. You might be wondering what does state exactly mean in the context of local stack? Well, local stack is ephemeral in nature. This means that when you stop your local stack instance, all of the resources that you created, like the S3 buckets, the DynamoDB tables, the RDS databases, they simply go away. By definition, anything that lives inside the local stack instance during the container lifecycle constitutes its state. Now, local stack does support persisting state for later uses. For example, you're working on an application that relies on many message queues or databases that need to be created and seeded every time you start your local stack instance. This may be time consuming and you would definitely want to create this once and use it over and over again. This is where local stack state management comes into play. In this video, I'm going to discuss three options that allow you to save your local stack state efficiently and reliably. So without spending any more time, let's jump right into it. The first option that we are going to discuss now is the local stack persistence mechanism. The persistence mechanism allows you to save and restore your entire local stack state including all of the AWS resources and the data on your local machine. The persistence mechanism basically functions as a pause and resume feature that allows you to take a snapshot of your local stack instance and save all of that data into the disk. This mechanism basically allows for a quick and efficient way to preserve and continue your work with AWS resources locally. To start the persistence mechanism on your local machine, you can just launch your local stack Docker container with the persistence configuration variable set to one. This will instruct local stack to start saving all of the AWS resources and the respective application state into the local stack volume directory. Once this is started up, you will see that the persistence mechanism works right into the background. And if you go ahead and start creating any given AWS resource, for example, I'm creating a KMS key over here. Local stack will start persisting all of those resources uh, onto your local machine. You will see that in a few seconds, the persistence mechanism would officially kickstart in, and this will automatically persist the particular resource that we have created over here on our local machine. And as you can see, local stack has already saved the snapshot to disk, and this took these many seconds to execute the whole process. So this is how the local stack persistence mechanism uh, traditionally work. If I go ahead and I restart my local stack Docker container using this handy CLI command that I have already configured before, you will notice that this will restart my whole local stack Docker container. And if I was running the local stack Docker container without any config variable like persistence over here, I would have noticed that there is simply no AWS resource that already exists. Uh, it is simply like a clean slate from where I have to start afresh. But in this case, local stack would have persisted my resources. And if I just check for the KMS keys that are available on my local machine, you can see that local stack has basically uh, persisted the KMS key that I have created in the previous local stack run. So this is how local stack basically persist uh, all of the AWS resources using a snapshot mechanism. And as always, local stack basically allow you to customize the way where you persist your local cloud resources. The best way to understand and know about this is to go to the documentation, navigate to the state management docs, and check out the persistence talk over here that details the various safe strategies available over here. What we have been traditionally using, and this is available by default, is a scheduled save strategy that basically saves all of the state of the services at regular interval. And this is mostly fit, fixed at almost 15 seconds. But obviously, you can go ahead and set additional save strategies, which can include like on request, which means that every time you make an AWS API call, it will start persisting the resources or the state that you have created or you have modified, or else you can use the on shutdown, which basically means that you persist your local cloud resources when you actually terminate your local stack instance, 
or else you can use the manual save strategy that basically allows you to use any one of these internal state endpoints to persist your local cloud resources. You can also customize the way in which you load the state of your resources. And you can do so by using the snapshot load strategy over here. And these are the various options that you can traditionally adopt, like the on request or on startup, or by just turning off any sort of an automated loading or saving of snapshot and just use the manual way by using these particular internal state endpoint. Internally, LocalStack is using uh, something that's called as the Python pickle mechanism to basically persist these resources. And what it does in the background is by using a custom state serialization protocol uh, to persist all of those resources. Now, some of the services also store application specific data, and these are particularly called as assets. Like if I take an example with DynamoDB, uh, DynamoDB, in case if you're persisting a DynamoDB table, it's not just the resource specific data that we need to persist. It's also what's sitting inside the DynamoDB table. So all of the items that we have already created has to be persisted. And in this case, DynamoDB serializes its stat into an SQLite database per account and per region. If I just have to show you an example, you can go to the Docker desktop or you can use a traditional Docker CLI. You can navigate to the terminal and you can navigate to the state directory where you will find all of the local stack state being persisted. So you can see that I have got all of these uh, resources over here, which includes CloudWatch, DynamoDB, uh, EKS, IAM, KMS, and more of these. If I navigate to something like DynamoDB, the example that I was citing before, you can see that it has got the store.state file. And this particularly contains all of the state that we need to restore and we need to load every time the local stack container is restarted with persistence mechanism enabled. Uh, and this is usually done using the lazy loading mechanism. So every time we call the DynamoDB for the first time, it will lazily load all of the persisted resources onto our local machine. And this will set everything up for our local development and testing. So this was a short and sweet intro to what persistence mechanism is all about. But furthermore, there are many other ways through which you can manage your local stack state. So let us move to the next option that you can adopt to basically efficiently save and manage your local stack state across multiple different local stack restarts. The second option that we are going to look at is the export and import state feature. The export and import state feature allows you to export the state of your local stack container into a binary file and import it into another local stack instance. This is an incredibly useful feature if you want to save your local stack instance state for later use. To get started with the export and import state feature, you can start the local stack Docker container. Local stack CLI provides a very handy interface that allows you to export, import, and reset the state of your local stack services. You can get started with this using the local stack state command, and you can specify either export or import or reset, depending on what your use case exactly is. To get started, we can create a KMS key as our very basic example, and we can run this command to create one. Once this is done, we can specify the local stack state command, and we can mention that we want to export the state of our local stack Docker container into this KMS-state file. Once you hit execute, this will export the state into this particular file over here. And this basically contains our persisted state in a binary object. To import the state, we can go ahead and restart the local stack Docker container using this handy command line interface command. And once this is done, we can import the state that we have already created before using the local stack state import command. Mention the name of the file. And this will basically import whatever state that we had exported uh, initially into this particular file. So this is how you can basically use the state export and state import functionality. Apart from this, 
you can also specify some custom flags that allows you to customize your persistence or basically the whole state import and export experience. For example, while you're exporting your state, you can technically also mention the services whose state you basically want to persist. And you can simply have a comma separated name of all of the uh, state that you want to save over here. Or else, if you want to specify the format of the exported state, you can mention the format flag over here. And you can mention something like JSON to basically specify that you want to save the command output as JSON. Similarly, for importing the state, all that you need to do is just uh, use the name of the file that you had created before. And this would simply do the trick for you in most of the cases. In case you don't want to use the command line interface to export, import, and manage your local stack state, you can also use the local stack web application. In this case, I can refresh my web application to accurately reflect that my local stack container is running. And if you navigate to the default instance, you will find that there is a particular state tab over here. You can go ahead and click that. And this would allow you to export the state with just one single click. If I go ahead and click on export state, you can see that this has exported the state of my local stack Docker container in my download directory. If I want to import a particular state, all that I need to do is go ahead and click this one button that would allow me to choose the file that was exported before. And this would basically set all of that state for me over my running local stack container. So this is how you can use the export and import state feature to basically have these binary object that has all of your local stack state persisted. And you can not only use them on your local machine, you can also share them with your colleagues who would like to restore the state that you have already created before. So let's move on to the final part of this video and let's understand what is the third option that we find pretty fascinating for interactive collaboration and debugging. So let's just get started with that. The third and the final option that we are going to discuss in this video is cloud pods. Cloud pods are persistent state snapshots of your local stack Docker container that can easily be stored, versioned, shared and restored. Cloud pods can be used for a variety of purposes. For example, you can use cloud pods for saving and managing the snapshots of your active local stack Docker container. You can additionally share the state snapshot with your team to have a sense of collaborative development and debugging. You can also use cloud pods to automate your testing pipelines by preceding continuous integration environments. And on top of that, you can also create reproducible development and testing environments, either on your local machine or on some CI provider or maybe some other automated environment. Cloud pods is a critical aspect of our next generation state management and team collaboration feature suite. And this is one of the things that I simply love about the local stack as a platform. To get started with cloud pods, you can start your local stack Docker container using the local stack CLI. The local stack cloud pods are shipped alongside the local stack CLI itself. And in this case, you can just enter local stack pod, and this will provide you many different options that allows you to manage the state of your local stack container using cloud pods. For example, you can save a new cloud pod using this save command over here. You can list the cloud pods available to you using the list command. You can load a pre-existing cloud pod using the load command. To get started with the cloud pod, I'm going to create a bunch of SQS queues over here, just as an example. And this will set up the SQS queue right on my local machine. The next step would be to enter local stack pod. And we can mention that we want to save this particular pod over here. And I can mention the name of my pod as YT, which is like YouTube dashboard, just for the purpose of this particular tutorial. So when you press enter, local stack will start to save this new version onto the local stack web application. So that's the reason you see the whole remote as a platform. You can see that the version is one. 
because cloud pods can basically allow you to version the state of your local stack container. And on top of that, you will see the services that has been persisted or basically stored onto the local stack web application. If I go ahead to my cloud pods dashboard, I can go to the local stack web application. I can click on cloud pods and I can just see the pods that are available to me. I can hit a refresh. And if I search for YT pod, maybe I should just go ahead and refresh my whole tab over here and search for the YT pod. You will get to see that I have my cloud pod available to me right over here. So if I minimize this, I can see that the cloud pod has been versioned, which is titled as the V1 over here. It was created by me on this particular day and time. You can see that I have been using the local stack 3.2.1 version, and you can see the size of the cloud pod is almost 2.69 kilobytes. On an additional note, you can also see the services that has been persisted in this particular version of the cloud pods. Now, if I go back to my terminal and I can maybe go ahead and create some other AWS resources. For example, I can create a KMS key, just like the previous examples. I can create an S3 bucket. And if I just go ahead and try to save this cloud pod once again, this would additionally create a new version of the cloud pod, which would be automatically saved on the local stack web application. You can see that in my services, not just SQS is present right now. You will also get to see CloudWatch, which was fired up because I used a particular AWS service. You can also see KMS over here. You can also see the S3 over here. And if I go back once again, and I refresh this whole tab over here, you will see that there will be a V2 of this cloud pod. And this would not just include SQS that we had before. It will also include things like CloudWatch, things like KMS or the S3 over here. Now to showcase the whole persistence mechanism really quick, I can go ahead and restart my local stack Docker container. And you can use the same set of commands that I have showed you before, which would be local stack pod load in this case. And I can mention that I want to load this particular cloud pod that I had created before. So if I say local stack pod load yt dash pod, which is the name of the cloud pod, the cloud pod will be basically pulled from the local stack web application, and all of that state would be restored on your local stack Docker container. Now, if I just do an AWS local S3 LS, you will get to see that I have the test bucket right over here that I had created before. In addition, if I just say AWS local KMS list keys, I can see that it also includes uh, the KMS keys that I had created uh, before. So this is how cloud pods basically work. Again, if you don't want to use the traditional command line interface for cloud pods, you can also use the local stack web application to manage the state of your cloud pod. So in this case, you can navigate to the local stack instances. You can go ahead and click on export and import state. And you can find that, that there is a cloud pod tab over here that allows you to save your local stack state to a cloud pod. If I just say that I want to save this to a new pod, I can mention this as like the tutorial pod. And I can create a new pod by just clicking this one button over here. And every time I restart my local stack container, I can just go to the same interface and I can enter the name of the pod that I want to restore on my local machine. And this would show me all of the versions over here, all of the services that would be a part of this particular cloud pod, which would give me a sense of what exactly I will be restoring on my local machine. Cloud pods has got a variety of use cases uh, that are simply not covered in this particular video. So the best way to know about them is to navigate to the local stack talks, to the state management part, and check out what we have got uh, in cloud pods. You will be able to find how you can use cloud pods to basically auto load the state uh, onto your new local stack container. You can also use cloud pods to basically store the state of your local stack container on some other places like the S3 bucket or maybe the RS remote storage. And there are like further use cases that I would basically provide you links for, which you can further explore to learn more about cloud pods. So this was it about how you can use various local stack state management features 
to save your state and restore them for later use. In upcoming videos, we'll further explore how you can use certain CloudPod features like preceding your CI state or creating reproducible applications or just performing collaborative development and debugging with your colleagues. I hope you liked the video and if you have any feedback, drop them down in the comment section below or you can join our Slack community. I'll see you in the next video.